This video is part of a series of videos presenting solutions of problems related to the machine dynamics topic. In this video, we are going to write velocity equations in matrix form for a mechanism involving 5 bars and 1 slider. In this problem, we are asked to answer the following questions related to the mechanism shown here. First, it is asked to write the loop closure equations and then deduce the system of equations for the position problem. Then, it is asked to deduce the system of equations for the velocity problem. Finally, it is requested to write the velocity system of equations in the form of a matrix equation. Let's start with the first question. This mechanism is built from six links, the ground, four bars, and one slider. The six links are connected together using six rotating kinematic pairs and one prismatic kinematic pair. In all seven lower pairs, are used. In this mechanism no higher pair is used. Thus, mobility is equal to 1. As mobility is equal to 1, the number of degrees of freedom of the mechanism is 1. It means that only one independent parameter is required to define completely and uniquely the position of the mechanism. It means also that mechanism has one degree of freedom controlled by an external source of energy. The mechanism should receive one input. Consequently, one position parameter should be given in order to be able to solve the position problem. For example, one bar angle should be considered as given. Let theta 2, the angle of the bar AB, be the given angle. Therefore, the position problem involves four unknowns. Theta 3, the angle of the bar BD. Theta 4, the angle of the bar DE. Theta 5, the angle of the bar EF. And, R6, the linear position of the slider C. In order to express the four unknowns in terms of the given angle theta 2, two loop vector equations are required. Here we will use the two loop vector equations shown here. AB plus BC equals AC. And, FE plus ED equals FC plus CD. Let's consider the loop vector equations, one by one, separately. The first loop vector equation involves the bar AB or link 2, the bar BD or link 3, and the slider C or link 6. The vector AB, is the vector position of link 2, it will be denotes as vector R2. The vector BC corresponds to a vector position of link 3, it will be denotes as R3, A. We use here the subscript 3, A, for vector BC as the second loop vector equation involves another vector position for link 3. The vector AC corresponds to a vector position of link 6, it will be denotes as R6, A. Here again, we use the subscript 6, A, for the slider C as the second loop vector equation involves another vector position for the slider. For the vector R2, its angle theta 2 depends on time and is defined as shown here. The angle theta 2 is here assumed given. The modulus of the vector R2 is constant and equal to the distance AB. For the vector R3A, its angle theta 3A depends on time and is defined as shown here. The angle theta 3A is here an unknown of the position problem. The modulus of the vector R3A is constant and equal to the distance BC. For the vector R6a, its angle theta 6 a is constant and equal to 0 degrees. The modulus of the vector R6a is time-dependent and is an unknown also of the position problem. In planar motion, each loop vector equation gives two scalar algebraic equations using horizontal and vertical coordinates of vectors. Using the horizontal coordinates of the vectors, the first scalar equation writes r2 cosine theta 2, plus, r3a cosine theta 3a, is equal to, r6a cosine theta 6a. Similarly, using the vertical coordinates of the vectors, the second scalar equation writes, r2 sine theta 2, plus, r3a sine theta 3a, is equal to, r6a sine theta 6a. As theta 6a is equal to 0 degrees, cosine theta 6a is equal to 1, 
and sine theta 6a is equal to 0. Thus the right term of the first equation is simply equal to r6a. And the right term of the second equation is simply equal to 0. Let's move now to the second equation. The second loop vector equation involves the bar BD or link 3, the bar ED or link 4, the bar EF or link 5, and the slider C or link 6. The vector FE, is the vector position of link 5, it will then be denoted as R5. The vector ED, is the vector position of link 4, it is denoted as R4. The vector FC is a second vector position of link 6, it is then denoted as R6B. The vector CD is also a second vector position of link 3, it is denoted as R3B. For the vector R5, its angle theta 5 depends on time and is defined as shown here. The angle theta 5 is here an unknown of the position problem. The modulus of the vector R5 is constant and equal to the distance EF. For the vector R4, its angle theta 4 depends on time and is defined as shown here. The angle theta 4 is here an unknown of the position problem. The modulus of the vector R4 is constant and equal to the distance DE. For the vector R3B, its angle theta 3B depends on time and is defined as shown here. The angle theta 3B is here an unknown of the position problem. The modulus of the vector R3B is constant and equal to the distance CD. For the vector R6B, its angle theta 6B is constant and equal to 180 degrees. The modulus of the vector R6B is time dependent and is an unknown also of the position problem. The second loop vector equation gives also two scalar algebraic equations using horizontal and vertical coordinates of vectors. Using the horizontal coordinates of the vectors, we get R5 cosine theta 5 plus R4 cosine theta 4 is equal to R6b cosine theta 6b plus R3b cosine theta 3b. Similarly, using the vertical coordinates of the vectors, we obtain R5 sine theta 5 plus R4 sine theta 4 is equal to R6b sine theta 6b plus R3b sine theta 3b. As theta 6b is equal to 180 degrees, cosine theta 6b is equal to minus 1, and sine theta 6b is equal to 0. Thus the right term of the first equation is simply equal to minus R6b. And the right term of the second equation is simply equal to 0. Using the first loop vector equation, we have established two scalar algebraic equations. Also using the second loop vector equation, we have established two more scalar algebraic equations. In all we have written four scalar equations. However, these equations involve six unknowns. Two more unknowns more than what can be solved. To avoid this blockage, we need to recall that theta 3a and theta 3b are both related to link 3, thus, they are not independent. Also R6a and R6b are both related to link 6, they are not independent. Let's consider link 3. The vectors R3a and R3b have the same direction. Thus, theta 3a and theta 3b are equal. Let's denote these two angles as simply theta 3. If we consider vectors R6a and R6b, we can notice that the sum of their moduli is constant and equal to the distance AF. Namely, R6a plus R6b is equal to AF. Let R6a be simply denoted as R6. And let AF be denoted as R1. We have R6b is equal to R1 minus R6. Using the two loop vector equations, we have established four scalar equations involving six unknowns. However, theta 3a and theta 3b are equal and simply denoted theta 3. Also R6a and R6b have a constant sum. Thus, 
it is possible to write the position problem as a system of four equations involving exactly four unknown, which can be solved. With this system, we have completed the answer to the first question. Let's move now to the second question. We are going to deduce the system of equations for the velocity problem starting from the system of equations of the position problem. To this purpose, the position equations will be differentiated, with respect of time in order to establish the velocity equations. Thus, we will start here from the four equations established in the first equation. In order to differentiate these equations with respect of time we need to recall that the time derivative of r cosine theta of time is equal to minus r times d theta over dt times sine theta of time and the time derivative of r sine theta of time is equal to r times d theta over dt times cosine theta of time. The time differentiation of the first equation gives minus r2 d theta 2 over dt sine theta 2 minus r3 a d theta 3 over dt sine theta 3 is equal to dr6 over dt. The second equation yields r2 d theta 2 over dt cosine theta 2 plus r3 a d theta 3 over dt cosine theta 3 is equal to 0. Also, when we differentiate the third equation with respect of time, we obtain minus r5 d theta 5 over dt sine theta 5 minus r4 d theta 4 over dt sine theta 4 is equal to minus 0 plus dr6 over dt minus r3 b d theta 3 over dt sine theta 3. Finally, the fourth equation gives r5 d theta 5 over dt cosine theta 5 plus r4 d theta 4 over dt cosine theta 4 is equal to r3 b d theta 3 over dt cosine theta 3. d theta 2 over dt is denoted here omega 2 and corresponds to the angular velocity of link 2, the bar ab. As mobility is equal to 1, all velocity parameters will be here expressed in terms of omega 2. Omega 2 is assumed given. d theta 3 over dt is denoted omega 3 and corresponds to the angular velocity of link 3, the bar bcd. Omega 3 is an unknown of the velocity problem. d theta 4 over dt is denoted omega 4 and corresponds to the angular velocity of link 4, the bar de. Omega 4 is an unknown of the velocity problem. d theta 5 over dt is denoted omega 5 and corresponds to the angular velocity of link 5, the bar ef. Omega 5 is an unknown of the velocity problem. dr6 over dt is denoted v6 and corresponds to the linear velocity of link 6, the slider. v6 is an unknown of the velocity problem. Our system of equations will now write as shown here. We can multiply the first and third equation by minus 1, and we obtain Finally, we move the terms of v6 and omega 3 from the right side to the left side. Also, we move the terms of omega 3 from the left side to right side. This system corresponds to the answer of the second question. Let's move now to the third question. We would like to write the system of velocity equations in a matrix form. We have established the system of equations in the second question. First we organize the equations such as in each term the omega will be after the sine or cosine. Thus the system writes. Here the system is of four equations, involving four unknowns. Thus, the matrix equation will be a 4 by 4 matrix times a 4 by 1 vector 
equal to a 4 by 1 vector. The first 4 by 1 vector is built of the system unknowns. The second 4 by 1 vector is built from the right hand terms of the each equations. The matrix is built from the factors of the unknowns. We first collect the unknowns in the vector of unknowns in a certain order. Here, we ordered the unknowns as follows, omega 3, omega 4, omega 5, and V6. Thus, the first column of the matrix corresponds to the factors of omega 3. The second column of the matrix corresponds to the factors of omega 4. The third column of the matrix corresponds to the factors of omega 5 and the fourth column of the matrix corresponds to the factors of V6. Then, we collect the right-hand terms of the scalar equations in the right-hand vector. Each row correspond to an equation. The right-hand term of the first equation will be in the first row of the right-hand vector. The right-hand term of the second equation will be in the second row of the right-hand vector. The right-hand term of the third equation will be in the third row of the right-hand vector. The right-hand term of the fourth equation will be in the fourth row of the right-hand vector. In the first column of the matrix, we collect the factors of the variable omega-3. The factor of omega-3 in the first equation corresponds to the element of the first row and first column. The factor of omega-3 in the second equation corresponds to the element of the second row and first column. The factor of omega-3 in the third equation corresponds to the element of the third row and first column. The factor of omega-3 in the fourth equation corresponds to the element of the fourth row and first column. Similarly, we collect the factors of omega-4 in the second column of the matrix. When the variable is absent from an equation, its factor is then equal to zero. In the same way, we collect the factors of omega 5 in the third column of the matrix. Finally, we collect the factors of V6 in the fourth and last column of the matrix. The factors of V6 in the first and third equation are equal to 1. V6 is absent from the second and fourth equation, thus, its factors are equal to 0. Here, we have answered the third question and we have established the matrix equation of the velocity problem. Here the vector of unknowns is not homogeneous. It involves angular velocities and linear velocities. It's better to multiply the angular velocities by a distance parameter. In order that the vector of unknowns will be homogeneous to a linear velocity. Thanks for watching.